What's going on all of my nursing brothers and sisters as well as my pre-healthcare professionals alike? I hope that y'all are having a wonderful day. Today we are continuing and discussing the last part of the ATIT science portion of the review and it's going to be a long one so buckled up and get ready. It is chemistry. If you haven't done so already, make sure you hit the subscribe button down below and better yet, hit that bell notification. It lets you know when I post new content here on YouTube. And give this video a big thumbs up. That way other people are looking for the ATIT's review videos know that this is a good video to help you pass it like a boss. Questions related to chemistry test your knowledge of chemical properties and processes. You may be asked questions about states of matter, properties of matter, phase changes, chemical bonds, chemical solutions, chemical reactions, and acids and bases. You may be asked to balance chemical equations as well. Let's get started understanding how the ATIT science portion of the exam covers chemistry. Let's get started with understanding states of matter. Matter is made up of microscopic particles that move different speeds depending on the energy they are exposed to. We measure this energy as temperature. The molecules can either move quickly and randomly or hardly at all. When the energy is high, matter takes the form of gas in which molecules are moving about quickly and are far apart. Gases have no fixed form. Molecules are free to move at random past each other and they tend to fill any container that holds them. If a gas is not contained, its molecules will disperse. Lower temperatures result in a liquid in which molecules cohere but are fluid. Coherence means that the molecules remain close together but they can change position by sliding over one another. In liquids, molecules move less freely than their gaseous state, sliding past one another. They have a fixed volume but can flow freely unless they fill a portion of a container. When the temperature is low, matter takes the form of a solid in which molecules are packed closely together and retain their positions. Solid matter is rigid and molecules retain a uniform spacing. A solid has a defined form which is brittle. It can be broken into pieces but tends to stay together. A somewhat unusual state of matter is plasma, which is like a gas in many ways of its property but carries an electrical charge. But the T's, just so that you know, will only focus on solids, liquids, and gases. The state of matter depends on temperature and pressure. Higher temperatures cause molecules to become energized and move apart. Increasing pressure forces molecules closer together. Melting is the phase change between solid and liquid, and boiling is the phase change between liquid to gas. There is also a direct change from solid to gas known as sublimation. The phase change from gas to liquid is called condensation, and the change from liquid to solid is called freezing. A direct change from gas to solid is called desposition. All types of matter can be described in terms of the physical and chemical properties each substance has. Physical properties are observable and there is an extensive list of physical properties that one could observe about a substance. For example, there is density, the temperature at which the substance undergoes phase changes, conductivity, specific heat capacity, mass, volume, color, and many other properties. Physical properties are further divided into intensive and extensive properties. An intensive property does not depend on the size or amount of matter in the object, while an extensive property does depend on the amount of matter in the object. For example, mass is an extensive property because the measurement could change the size of the sample. Boiling point is an extensive property because the temperature at which the object boils is not dependent on its volume. Water is a polar inorganic compound that is transparent and nearly colorless. H2O is a covalent compound because oxygen and hydrogen are nonmetals. It has eight total valence electrons, six from oxygen and one from each hydrogen. Breaking the bonds requires a lot of energy, so water has a very high specific heat and heat evaporization. The molar mass of water is 18.02. It commonly exists as solid, liquid, and gas. 
The polarity of water allows it to exhibit both cohesiveness and adhesive properties. Cohesiveness allows a water to travel through tiny capillaries and create surface tension on the surface of a body of water. Adhesiveness allows water to stick to other molecules and dissolve them, making it known as the universal solvent. Water also has a unique property called osmosis, which is a specific type of diffusion. Diffusion is a term used to describe the process of a substance moving from an area of high concentration to an area of low concentration. Osmosis is a type of diffusion in which water moves passively through a semi-permeable membrane to equalize water concentrations on both sides of the membrane. This is how water moves throughout cell walls in the body. A chemical compound is created when two or more atoms join to form a chemical bond that leaves the atoms in a less excited state than they were before they had the bond. Such bonds are formed in two ways. A covalent bond occurs when atoms share electrons between them. This type of bond is common between two atoms of the same element, such as hydrogen, H2, or in similar elements. When a molecule shares a pair of electrons in a stable state, it has formed a covalent bond. Alkanes, for example, share a single bond. In some compounds, one atom takes the shared electron for more time due to its structure forming a polar covalent bond. This molecule is partly negatively charged and partly positively charged. Some molecules form a double bond, sharing four electrons as opposed to two. These bonds are commonly represented in the alkanes hydrocarbons with twice as many hydrogen molecules as carbon molecules. It is possible to form triple bonds as seen in a group of hydrocarbons such as alkenes. An ionic bond is created between atoms when one atom gives an electron to the other. These bonds typically take place between metals and nonmetals due to the unique electron configuration of metals with the metal giving an electron to the nonmetal. That transfer creates a positive charge and a negative charge at the end of the compound. A positive charge, or cation, is created by the giver of electron. The negative charge, or anion, is located at the receiving end of the electron. The net charge of the compounds remains balanced at zero. A chemical solution is a group of chemical compounds evenly distributed in the state of matter. The solution is a homogeneous mixture in which one chemical compound is completely dissolved in the other, like water and salt. This is most easily achieved in a liquid state. There are mixtures that are not solutions. For example, a heterogeneous mixture maintains separation between two substances such as oil and water. The solute is a compound dissolved in the solvent. Liquid make excellent solvents. The solubility of a solvent depends on the nature of the liquid as well as the external factors like temperature. The concentration of the solution is the amount of solute in the solution. The mole is the unit of measurement for chemical reactions and refers to the compound's molecular mass. To create a chemical compound from other elements and compounds, a chemical reaction is needed. Two or more reactants are added together often with an input of energy, creating one or more products or byproducts. Photosynthesis occurs, for instance, when a plant cell combines carbon dioxide and water. The sun's rays provide the energy. The chemical reaction produces sugar and oxygen. Chemical reactions are shown with equations and have a basic pattern. Reactants go on the left and products go on the right, with the reaction sign and arrow showing the direction of the reaction in the middle. Here is an example showing the formation of water. Two, H2 plus O2 is equal to 2H2O. Equations for chemical reactions must be balanced. There must be the same number of atoms of each element on both sides of the reaction. Notice in the equation above that there are four hydrogen atoms and two oxygen atoms on each side. Only their arrangement is changed. There are five basic types of chemical reactions. Synthesis, two separate things joining together to form one compound. Decomposition, one compound breaks down into two or more compounds. Combustion, the use of fuel, a combustible material, with oxygen to form carbon dioxide and water. Single replacement, 
One element or compound replaces another element or compound in a compound. For example, A plus BC is equal to AC plus B. Or double replacement. Two ionic compounds create two or more iconic compounds. For example, AB plus CD is equal to AD plus CB. Reaction rates depends on the likelihood of collisions between particles. The reaction rate can be altered by changing the following factors. Concentration, the more particles there are, the higher chance of collisions. Temperature, particles excite at higher temperatures, so more collisions are likely and they will have more energy. Pressure, increased pressure forces particles together, so collisions are more likely. Surface area, in a solid, only particles at the surface can collide. The bigger the surface, the faster the reaction. Breaking up a sample into smaller particles provides more surface area for collisions. And catalysts, a catalyst is a substance that changes the rate of a chemical reaction but is chemically unchanged at the end of the reaction. Chemical reactions occur in nature and in the laboratory. A catalyst will speed up the reaction by lowering the amount of energy needed to start that reaction. Enzymes act as catalysts in cellular processes. They quicken the chemical reaction, turning a molecule, known as a substrate, into a product without being altered themselves. Many acids and bases can be understood from the perspective of the theory developed by Arrhenius, a Swedish scientist. In this view, an acid is a substance that gives off hydrogen ions when it is dissolved in water. A base, or alkaline substance, is a substance that gives off hydroxide ions when it is dissolved in water. Acidic solutions have higher concentrations of hydrogen ions, whereas alkaline solutions have lower concentration of hydrogen ions. The presence of acids and bases can be tested using tools known as indicators. One indicator in common use is litmus paper. Litmus paper turns red at the presence of a base. Here are some examples of acids and bases and their chemical formulas. Acids have acetic acid, phosphoric acid, citric acid, hydrochloric acid, and sulfuric acid. Bases have ammonia hydroxide, lithium hydroxide, magnesium hydroxide, potassium hydroxide, and sodium hydroxide. The acidity and alkalinity of solutions is measured using a scale known as pH scale. Each step of the pH scale has 10 times the difference in concentration of hydrogen ions as the step before or after it. So, a solution of a pH of 7 will have 10 times more hydrogen ions than a solution with a pH of 8 and 10 times fewer hydrogen ions than a solution with a pH of 6. The T-Science section may contain questions that ask you to balance chemical equations. We will outline the steps in this process later in this review. One of the most important chemical equations for humans is the one that represents photosynthesis. Without the following equation, there would be no life on Earth. CO2 plus HO2 is equal to C6H12O6 plus O2. This equation shows how green plant cells, with the help of the sun's energy, convert carbon dioxide and water into glucose and oxygen. The two reactants, carbon dioxide and water, are on the left side of the arrow. The arrow shows the direction of the production, and the two products, sugar and oxygen, are on the right side of the arrow. According to the law of conservation of mass, in a chemical reaction, no energy is lost, but neither is mass destroyed. The amount of reactant must match the amount of product that they are made of, even if those products escape as a gas or liquid. In the photosynthesis equation, there is a difference in the number of atoms on the right and left sides. To produce sugar, oxygen requires more reactants than we have on the left side. The solution is to balance on both sides. We can multiply any molecule with a number called a coefficient. We cannot change the subscript, however, without changing the nature of that molecule. By adding coefficients to the reactants and products, we can balance the equation in a few simple steps. The best way to do this is by balancing each element in turn, starting with carbon. The right side has six carbon atoms and the left side 
needs six as well. We have multiplied the CO2 by six to result in six carbon atoms on the left side. When we multiply CO2 by six, this also changes the number of oxygen atoms on the left side from three to 13. There are now 12 oxygen atoms in the CO2 molecule and one in the H2O molecule for a total of 13. The two changed numbers are shown underlined in the following table. Now, the carbon is equal, but the hydrogen remains unequal and the oxygen has changed in number. Next, we're gonna fix the hydrogen. Here, we multiplied the H2O molecule by six to result in 12 hydrogen, two atoms on the left side. When we multiply H2O by six, the further changes the two number of the oxygen atoms on the left side from 13 to 18. There is now 12 oxygen atoms in the CO2 molecules plus six in the H2O molecules for a total of 18. Lastly, our last remaining imbalance rests with the oxygen. At this point, there is plenty of oxygen in the reactants. We can balance the equation by producing more oxygen, O2. In this step, the O2 molecule on the right side was multiplied by six. This results in 18 oxygen molecules on the right side. The equation is now balanced. Each element has the same number of atoms on the left and the same number of atoms on the right. I hope that this video has helped for you to pass your ATITs like a boss the first time. If you haven't done so already, I want to invite you over to my website at www.nursechung.com. There, there's additional resources for you to help you pass this exam. We've got practice questions as well as PDFs of the PowerPoints that I show in these videos. If you haven't done so, make sure that you follow me on my social media. I am on Facebook and Instagram. And until next time, I hope that y'all are having a wonderful day and I will see you all again soon. Bye.